I'm Emily Actorzandi, Managing Director of Atlantic Live, the events division of The Atlantic, and I'm delighted to welcome you today to Women in Business, an Atlantic Exchange. We're excited to spend our time together to discuss the perennial issues that women face in starting and growing businesses. We've had the pleasure of hearing the pitch session of the U.S. Small Business Administration's Innovate Her Business Challenge finalists, which reflect the innovation, creativity, and vision of women entrepreneurs in bringing their ideas to life. We'll explore these themes by diving into topics that concern many women business owners, such as accessing capital and what it takes to scale a business. We've curated a strong group of leaders for this conversation, from venture capital firms and gender equity investors to federal advisors and C-level executives. We're anticipating a robust conversation this afternoon. But before we begin, I'd like to take the opportunity to thank our underwriters for making this Atlantic Exchange possible, Chase for Business, MasterCard, and Gallup, and the SBA who we're presenting this in association with. A few notes on social media. We're on Twitter at Atlantic underscore live, and you can join the conversation using the hashtag ATL Women Biz. And we're also streaming this event at theatlantic.com slash live, and we'll have video highlights posted tomorrow. We'll take questions after each session, so please don't be shy, and we want to hear from many of you. And now, um, we're going to hear from Maria Contreras Sweet from the United States Small Business Administration, who will make some framing remarks for us. So Maria, the stage is yours. Thank you. Well, most of you already heard me uh, earlier today, so I won't repeat um, the full of the fullness of my remarks. But let me just say that when Aaron and I discussed the possibility of bringing you together to help lift your stories and to help inspire others, uh, we thought about who we might partner with. And I was really taken in by an earlier session that I participated in uh, with The Atlantic, and they did such a nice job featuring women streamlining the message and making certain that women were able to hear these stories over and over again. We all need a little bit of inspiration and a little bit of navigation. And so I'm proud that the SBA chose the Atlantic to team up with again. So thank you again, so nice to see you. Uh, let me just say that for those of you who know my story, I came out of California and I became California's Secretary of Business, Transportation and Housing. And why it's relevant today is I was putting out billions of dollars of contracts every year. And what I saw was that we didn't have the diversity that I felt California deserved. And so I went out to talk to people about why they weren't looking to California, a government, as a client. And they said, number one, we don't know when you put these contracts out. So I knew that we needed to make certain that we were amplifying the work that we were doing and the benefits of contracting when a woman gets a contract, her receivables, the quality of the salary of her employees, and her growth potential is immeasurable. So I knew that I needed to do more work. Some of you as women said to me, number one, we need that counseling to know how to navigate through the system. Number two, what we need is we need a bond to be able to bid and do the performance on that contract. You couldn't get access to bonding. You said you couldn't get access to capital. And of course, you wanted access to more contracts. And so as you know, I decided to do what any woman does. I went to my girlfriends and said, after I left office, we need to start a woman-owned bank that has the ability to do the consultation, help them get contracts, and provide them the capital that they deserve. And so I went to 25 girlfriends, I went through my Christmas card list, and said to them, I know the price of your shoes and of that lovely purse you're carrying. And we've always talked about helping empower other women. So this is a time for us to act and to build a bank that we can call our own. And I had done my homework and I understood that we needed $500,000 to submit that application. We went around, we passed that envelope around, and when I was done, I had a commitment of a million point two from those women. I'm really proud of what women are doing today. After that, I worked for about eight months. It takes that long to submit the application. It's literally about this high. 
every reg you can imagine. It's the most regulated business uh, in the world. And submitted my application, and then about eight months later, I received the response. The good news was our charter was approved. The bad news was now to build the bank, we needed about $25 million. Well, I could do the math, and that was perfect math. And so these women set out, and we gave them, the SEC gives you to do a raise. They give you about a year. I have to tell you that in eight months, they came back having raised $42 million. This is, thank you. And so we built a bank that would provide, as I said, the counseling, the contracting, and access to capital opportunities. The reason I tell you that story is it remains the work that I do today as the head of the United States Small Business Administration. If you need a surety bond, if you need access to capital, our loans provide you anywhere from 50 to 90% guarantee. Imagine going into the bank with a wealthy uncle, if you have one, who will guarantee your loan. But if you don't, you have Uncle Sam. <laughs> if you, if uh, you need counseling, Tamika here runs the finest counseling network in the world on behalf of SBA. Tamika, wave your hand. Well, she was here a little bit ago. She may have snuck out, but trust me, she's there. Um, and then, of course, contracting. As I mentioned earlier, we set out to meet and exceed all of our goals. For our disadvantaged population, our goal is 5%. We reached a 10% goal this year. For women, we had never met the goal before. We exceeded the 5% goal. For women, our lending is up by 24%. And so I'm really proud of all of the work that the SBA team has done. And so I hope for all of you uh, who are part of our SBA team, would you please just give us a little wave so we can give you a great shout out. Thank you for being here. All of you at SBA, thank you very much. Thank you, Sophia. Thank you. Um, let me just say that the issue of expanding women's access to capital couldn't be more personal to me for all the reasons that I just outlined. And I see women making really great strides, yet access to capital still remains an important issue. So we will continue to do the work that we're doing. We have zeroed out fees on loans under $150,000. We put up a link program that directs your, uh, you know, many of you are looking, for, well, how many of you ever use match.com? Okay, don't tell me that's all right. You don't have to tell me. But I'm sure that some of you may have heard of Match.com, and what it does is uh, you complete a few questions and then you're routed to what would be an enduring relationship, hopefully, uh, hopefully. Well, ours directs you to a new relationship, but this one is with the lender that will certainly be sometimes even more helpful than others. Uh, but anyway, I'm really delighted that all these programs are taking hold and uh, that everybody is pulling their weight. I just received uh, this morning the latest number. I said, since I arrived, I want to know what the metrics are. I'm still a banker at heart. And they said that our women uh, loans are actually up by 42%. So I was wrong. It's up 42%. And to minorities, we're up by 36%. This is terrific. Under President Obama, SBA has backed uh, more than 4.5 million jobs. At SBA, we've been uh, busy growing our lending network. I've expanded. I went to Debbie Matz, who manages the, uh, she's the chief regulator for credit unions. And you know, what, you know what I know. Credit unions aren't paying taxes. They don't have CRA responsibility. They're considered nonprofit. So I said, you need to get in the game. There's no reason why Americans should give you a pass like that if you're not in the game and providing more small business loans. And they are such wonderful people. They actually agreed, quickly came on board, and now the SBA is training a lot of the small business lenders across the country in the credit unions. And so we're pleased that we now have more outlets where you can secure the SBA loans. With respect to micro loans, which is where women start on the loans under $50,000, we have doubled down on that. And many of you know from communities of color, one of the things that I really regretted was when I heard about anybody from a community of color or even in general populations, if you had taken a wrong turn if you ended up incarcerated, you paid your debt to society, and then you came out to try to get a job, you know what happens? You say, yes, I have been convicted of a crime, and as soon as you complete and you check that box, your application gets submitted, you know what the answer is gonna be. And so we just said, if they're not gonna get the government job and not gonna get the corporate job, how do we help them at SBA? And so we have joined and are now part of the leadership of Ban the Box. I have asked my team, to eliminate the question on our microloan applications so that people who have paid their debt to society are entitled to be able to feed their children. And that includes an awful lot of women ladies out there. I'm proud of that work. 
But at the other spectrum, I also know that some of you, just like my Christmas card list, has a lot of wealth and you want to invest in other women and that's why you're here. And so at SBA, we also have the Office of Innovation and Investment. Hear this, if you have, say, hypothetically, you had $20 million that you wanted to invest in a small business, with an SBIC license, it's a two to one match. It becomes $60 million to invest in a woman owned business. And so we really want you to look up SBIC and learn more about how we can help finance all of those women that you want to be financing out there. Anyway, I could go on. I'm so proud of the programs that we've developed and, and expanded. But my message uh, in closing is this. I think it takes a troika. It has to take a troika. We absolutely need innovators around the world who are coming up with the kinds of things that I saw this morning at the Innovator Competition. I was so heartened and impressed by every one of them. That's why I made sure that I was not a judge. Wasn't each one of them impressive? But what they need is also institutions, government institutions that help them start up in a day. And so we've launched a program across the country. I've challenged every mayor in this country to join me through the National League of Cities to make certain that entrepreneurs can start their business in one day. And already close to 100 mayors from Chicago to Boston, San Francisco, Los Angeles have signed up so that entrepreneurs will soon be able to take all the permitting that they need, complete it and submit it through an online solution and complete it in a day. So we'll continue to do those kinds of things that you're asking us to do. And finally, I went just last week, or maybe it's now been 10 days, I, I went to Wall Street because it also takes investors to help women succeed. And I went to Wall Street to ask them, we need for them to get off the sidelines and to get in the game. As I, I will repeat what I mentioned earlier, when we have 50% of the population in women and they receive only 4% of VC funding, that has to change. And so we will continue to amplify the voice so that we have that full complementary of innovators with institutions and investors understanding the generosity and the ingenuity of women and what they're able to do to make our lives better so that they can come up with precision medicine solutions that are not as invasive, that we can come up with precision agriculture solutions. I'm from California, we're out of water. We need aeroponics, hydroponics solutions to be expanded. Today's wars are not so much about boots on the ground, it's about cybersecurity. You all heard that the US government was hacked, Sony was hacked. The banks are being hacked, and so we know that the future will be cybersecurity. That is the challenge for us as women, to think about the future and what we can do to make certain that we're providing at least our fair share of leadership and solutions for our children and theirs. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for coming today, and thank you to The Atlantic for being with us. God bless you, and God bless the United States of America. Thank you.